Hey guys, Zach here, and today I want to talk to you guys about some products that I like to use that help me with my aquariums and my aquarium setup. Now, these are all things that I've gotten from different places. All of the products aren't going to be from the aquarium store. They're products that I've gotten from other places, be it like the hardware store or something of similar caliber. And I find all of them extremely useful. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now the first product on this list is the tried and true, something that I have used in almost all of my scapes, something that you guys have probably used before, and that's just gonna be Ciano Acrylate Super Glue. Now this stuff is super useful, super versatile, and I really love it. It's gonna get you by with 98% of your needs in the aquarium hobby, right? If you've got wood and some rock and you want to stop your wood from floating up, super glue, super useful, and it's pretty discreet, especially when you get planting and you stuff some moss on top of it or an epiphyte on top of it, you really don't see it. And the best part is, is that it is inert once dried, so it's not going to affect your water quality or the parameters of your tank. Now, with Cyanoacrylate, there are really two kinds that are out on the market, and that's going to be gel and liquid. Now I like to use these both just for a couple different things. I'm going to use a liquid when I'm attaching hardscape to itself or to other hardscape, right? So if I've got wood and I've got rock, I'm going to use the liquid and I generally use something like a tissue or a paper towel between the wood and the rock and then pour super glue over that, like squeeze a little bit over that. That just creates a larger area for it to bond to and it creates a stronger hold. Now I'll use gel super glue when I'm attaching things like moss and epiphytes. I've just found that this kind of holds better and props it up and it also allows me to just stick it on and then leave it and it'll dry. Whereas with the liquid I found I've had to hold it on for longer. Now before we move on, if you guys would consider subscribing, it does greatly help out the channel. And without further ado, let's move on to product number two. Now the second thing on this list is pretty close to glue, except it's just a little bit bigger and a little bit tougher, and that's going to be silicone. Now, I haven't really gotten too, too into using silicone, however, I've used it a couple of times and I found it super, super useful in multiple different situations. The first is going to be pretty obvious, and that's just redoing tanks, sealing, and making tanks yourself. For my paludarium setup that I have, I cut off one end of a 20 gallon long and use that as the front glass panel. Attached it with silicone myself and that was a great way to get around going out and buying a tank specifically as a tall tank and I found it a great way to save some money too because you can buy older tanks or you can find tanks that people are throwing out that are quote unquote leaking and just reseal them. You can either take the tank completely apart and redo all the silicone or just reseal the inside and I've found that that works wonderfully. Now silicone I also do use sort of like glue in situations where I need to weigh down something a little bit bigger. So if I've got a real big chunky piece of wood that I know is going to float then I'm probably going to use silicone to anchor it down either to rocks or if I start bare bottom tank. I'll put the piece of wood in and silicone it on the bottom glass and that will keep it nice and secured. Now a warning before you do decide to go crazy with silicone is that you do want to have the proper safety gear with it. It's a little bit more dangerous than your typical run of the mill super glue, right? Get it on your skin, it can really hurt to get silicone off so I like to wear gloves. The other thing is that silicone does create kind of like a smell, so if you're not really into that, you do have to do stuff outside with silicone. That's what I always do when I reseal tanks, or at the very least, if I'm just putting hardscape in, I'll open up all the windows to make sure it airs out. Another thing to be a little bit cautious of when looking at silicone is that you are getting 100% silicone, not silicone that has some other stuff in it. If it does have other things inside of the mixture, then it's not going to work 100% of the time and I would be very cautious. You just look at the bottle and it'll say 100% silicone or not. If it doesn't, don't pick it up. If it's got other stuff in there, the water can get through or it might be something that they've added in to keep mold and other stuff away and that will harm your inhabitants in your tank. Now the third product on the list is something that 
Some guys will use and some guys won't use. It really depends on the situation and you can't find it in any aquarium stores. Only I found hardware stores and it's this right here. This is egg crate. It's a plastic that comes in these big sheets and I'm not even sure what it's normally used for, but it's super useful in a couple different ways. The first way is just if you're going to do an Iwagumi scape and you've got big, big, chunky rocks, I like to lay this down on the bottom first, put my rocks in, and then put in my substrate. This is just going to distribute the weight of the rocks across the bottom. Instead of having these pinpoint spots on the bottom where the glass could break and you've got weight piled up, it spreads it across the bottom and stops that from happening. I even use this if I'm just going to use bigger, chunkier rocks in general just to try and spread out the footprint and distribute the weight, and it's really great at that. Now, another way that I like to use this is just for creating skeletons in any of my larger scapes. So again, going back to my waterfall paludarium, I'll use this to kind of block out the upright piece, and that'll prevent me from using too much hardscape and creating a really heavy scape, and it also gives me attachment points for the hardscape. I can use this in place of using 10 pieces of stone. I can use this and then use maybe three or four pieces of stone and attach it in a way that makes it look cohesive. So consider giving this a go if you want to use an Irigumi scape or if you want to make a larger scape. Now the fourth product on this list you guys have seen me use before on the channel in a whole variety of different scapes. Some guys love it, some guys hate it, and it is spray foam. Now this stuff has saved my butt a whole bunch of times. It really is great for blocking out scapes and keeping things lightweight. Now the first way I like to utilize it is just to create backgrounds and not just standard backgrounds, backgrounds with some depth and some character. It's really great at that. You just spray some out and work in small sections with the tank turned over and you can add in rocks and wood and a whole bunch of other elements that help to bring it to life and create a whole new layer to your aquariums. Now, another way I do like to utilize it is in bigger scapes. I'll use it to help me block out sections and keep me from using too much hardscaping material. And I'll use it in combination with the egg crate to create a nice skeleton. So examples would be in my waterfall paludarium. It goes pretty much vertical up. Instead of using five or 10 or 20 different rocks, I'll use egg crate to block it out and then spray foam. I'll slowly go up and attach some rocks in, maybe with some spray foam, maybe even with some silicone, and I'll fill in all the gaps with the spray foam to create a nice flowing and aesthetic piece that is also pretty sturdy and it's still lightweight. That's super important to keep it kind of lightweight and save me a little bit of money by using less hardscape materials. Now, just like silicone, I do recommend using gloves and glasses with spray foam, as the bottle says. It's important to wear that proper safety gear before using it. If it does get in your eyes, it's a mess, or if it gets on your hands, it can really hurt them, and it's hard to get off. But with all of that, spray foam is still great, and it's super easy to work with after it's cured. I found that if I leave it for like 15 minutes and let it sort of start to dry, as soon as it's tacky on the outside but not like kind of foamy and just going everywhere, I can push it in and it won't expand as much. However, if you just leave it overnight and let it cure for the 24 hours, it'll expand out, but it's super easy to work with. You can just peel it away with your hands or even use a knife to carve it away, and then you can hide any parts that are still exposed with a combination of super glue as well as either crushed up rock or sand and it looks very good and it'll create a nice cohesive look without being too heavy keeping lightweight as well as saving you a little bit of money on those hardscaping materials now the final product that i have found to be very very useful and has helped me from time to time is going to be small vinyl tubing now i'm talking about vinyl tubing that is very small in diameter not the same size as like a hose or like a gravel siphon sort of tubing. That's too big. I'm talking about much smaller and this really helps me to target specific areas in the tank if I'm doing any maintenance on it. An example would be say a plant dies and I've got a lot of 
dead organics down there or I've got botanicals that have broken down and it's starting to affect the quality of the water, I will target that area specifically and just clean it up with small vinyl tubing. It works the exact same way and is just a siphon and it's perfect and it works great without taking out too much water because as you guys know I don't like to do too many water changes on tanks. I like to try and keep my parameters pretty stable and doing this allows me to remove any waste that can cause harm without removing too too much water. It also helps me to target the area specifically without getting out my gravel vacuum and disturbing a lot of the tank. Another great thing about it is that I can work on a bunch of different tanks only using like a five gallon bucket without having to constantly go and empty it back out. I can take a five gallon bucket and I can do two or three tanks that need maintenance all in one go and I'm only going to dump out probably two maybe three gallons of water. So if you've got some smaller scapes or some scapes with some finer details or just little bits of maintenance that need done and you don't want to pull out your big gravel siphon for, I would recommend getting some small vinyl tubing. So that's everything for this video. Hopefully this was useful to you guys and you'll give maybe a couple of the products a try if you haven't already. But if you have enjoyed, please consider subscribing. If you guys do have any products that you like to use that a lot of people don't know about, consider leaving them down below in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.